Hello and welcome to the France 24 interview. I'm Marcus Carlson. Tunisia became a trailblazer for democracy in North Africa at the start of the year. A wave of protests ousted the former president Zine El Abidine Ben Ali. But the interim government who took over has struggled to restore stability and there have been fresh protests and accusations the government's turning its back on democracy. Today we'll be speaking to the Tunisian Foreign Minister Mohamed Mouldi Kefi, who's with me here in the studio. Mr. Foreign Minister, thanks very much indeed for speaking to us today. Thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure. Now, as I said in, in, in the introduction, we have seen renewed protests in Tunisia. Obviously, a lot of people are not happy with uh, what the government, the current government is doing. Uh, what do you say about that? Well, uh, when you say a lot of people, I would like to correct you a little bit. It's not a lot of people. It's uh, a bunch of youth uh, who are taking uh, uh, every opportunity uh, seizing every opportunity to do some trouble. Uh, could it be uh, a, 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 a football match, a football fixture, or some uh, rumors which were uh, conveyed by the former Minister of Interior, for, mm -hmm. for instance. So they just grabbed the, the opportunity uh, to riot and to try to uh, steal and to... Uh, smash uh, windows and uh, shops and uh, uh, to do really what they want to do uh, regardless of the reason. But you say that they're troublemakers, but there are some concerns though that, that the election that you have promised coming up in uh, July, on July the 24th, that they won't go ahead. Can you tell us today that they will go ahead? Well, uh, the government is adamant. The, the government would like really that the elections go ahead because we took a pledge, the president and the prime minister and the whole government is very keen that the elections take place during uh, the early days, uh, I, I mean uh, on the 24th of July, the, the last week of July. Uh, because we, as I, I told you, it's a moral pledge and it's a political pledge. We are doing our best uh, to, uh, to see the uh, outcome of the elections on the uh, July the, the 24th. Uh, the, the government never uh, came back or get back or mm -hmm. uh, on, on that pledge. So that's still the case. Absolutely. July the 24th is the date. Absolutely, absolutely. I can confirm that. And the Prime Minister himself, uh, three days ago, gave a, a, a press conference. And when he was asked, he said, yes, the government and the Prime Minister himself and the President himself is a really, uh, generally, a truly, uh, committed to that date. Now, a former foreign minister, excuse me, interior minister last week suggested that uh, there could be a coup d'etat being prepared by former allies of President Ben Ali if Islamists win the, uh, the upcoming election. W what do you say about that? Well, first of all, uh, I would like to laugh, but it's tragic and it doesn't give me any uh, pleasure uh, to, to laugh about that because really what he said, the rumors he uh, spread, uh, the lies, I can tell them lies, because first of all, he said, I presume that, I think so, I believe that. How could you expect from someone who used to be a minister of interior to uh, go to such uh, a low level? Because uh, you have three ministries, not only in Tunisia, but all over the world. The Minister of Interior, the Minister of Defense, and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. There is what we call, when I uh, joined the Minister of Foreign Affairs, they told me that there is an obligation of reserve, obligation de reserve, which mm -hmm. every diplomat, every officer, uh, honest officer, every uh, high official in this, th those three ministries should uh, go by and should obey. But <laughs> even, even something is true uh, w when you are in such a position, you have to take it with you into the grave, let alone what if it is only just rumors. It is, uh, the, he never, first of all, he never said that the former uh, regime or the former uh, people of the, I mean the people of the former president uh, tra, tra, are trying to, uh, to, 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 take over, to take over. He said that the uh, uh, chief of staff of the army, which is a very serious 
uh, accusation mm -hmm. without no proof. You can't accuse people, you especially that, today. You say that, that, that this former interior minister doesn't have any proof, though, but it has fueled a lot of concerns That's that perhaps the will of the people won't be followed in, at the end of the day in, in July, on July the 24th, in the election. Can you guarantee to us today that that will be the case, that the will of the people will be followed? Absolutely. First of all, I think that the minister, of, the former minister of interior himself, uh, get back on what he said, and he said, "I was manipulated. I never said that. Uh, probably I was, I was trapped." He used the, the word "trap," uh, and uh, I think uh, what he said has nothing to do with the truth uh, regarding the prime minister going to it, uh, to, uh, to Algeria, and he never mentioned anything about fees or about another regarding the uh, uh, trip of the. Uh, chief of staff accompanied by the minister of defense mm -hmm. because the minister of defense was there and we have uh, good ties with Qatar since uh, the early days of, uh, of, uh, of our independence even before 1987 uh, and he was there to carry a personal message of the president to the head of state of, uh, 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 the, to the emir of Qatar to boost our uh, relationships Exactly as I did myself when I went to Mauritania is exactly as I'm going to do it in the coming week. I'm going to Kuwait, to the Emirates, uh, carrying a personal message of the president of Tunisia to, to, to present mm -hmm. to those countries the new face of Tunisia and to tell them that we would like to have a good relationship with them in every single field. Let me just pick your brain on, on, on one issue, and that is the Islamist uh, Nada party that you just mentioned. Uh, do you think it would be a good or a bad thing if they were to win the election? Well, I think in a democratic system, there is no bad or good thing. I think that if the people will choose anyone to become members of the Constitutional Assembly or later on to become members of the National Assembly, and I believe that uh, the will of the people should be respected and should be uh, followed, if the majority will choose their representatives, I think it's up to them. Mm -hmm. Today, the people of Tunisia, after almost 50 years of dictatorship, is willing to have a say in the choice of uh, its leaders. And I think that's the name of the game of democracy today. I want to switch uh, subjects a little bit. Uh, since the Tunisian uprising, we have seen tens of thousands of Tunisians going across the Mediterranean onto European shores. A lot of uh, European Union countries are, are concerned about this. Is it a priority for you to stem the flow of migrants across the Mediterranean? Well, first of all, again, let me correct you. It's not tens of thousands. It's just 20,000. And let me tell you that compared to the over 300,000 Tunisia received in the past few months from Libya, it's less than one-tenth. It's one-fifteenth. So, in, in your view, it's, it's a trickle, not, not a flood? Absolutely not. First of all, it's true that about 20,000 people fled Tunisia when the security situation were, were a little bit flows. Uh, now, uh, I mean, uh, the situation was weak at that time, but nowadays the situation is much better, mm -hmm. uh, regardless of the few uh, troubles we are having but in what do you make days. of what do you make of the conflict and the row that has uh, come up between Italy and France for instance over these uh, refugees over these migrants from Tunisia what do you make of that conflict well first of all it's uh, an Italian French problem it's not our problem what we did with Italy is that we signed uh, an agreement on the April the 5th and we told them they promised to take care and to help the 20,000 who are already there. Mm -hmm. Who arrived, the, the migrants who arrived after uh, that date, after April the 5th, when we signed the agreement with the Italians, we told them we'll take them back. And we had about 800 illegal immigrants who were called back to Tunisia with the help of the government to find jobs for them and mm -hmm. financial help and psychological help as well. The others, now, uh, they are, uh, some of them are in Italy, some of them, I think, 20,000. Others were given by Italy uh, 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 
traveling permit to, to allow them to travel within Schengen. But really, uh, I think it's uh, a small drop in the ocean of the problems we are facing. And what is at stake today, it's not 20,000 mm -hmm. illegal migrants. It's the future of Tunisia, democratic Tunisia, the, fruit of the, the future of the whole area. And uh, if the uh, experience uh, succeeded in Tunisia, it will be a success story for the others. One other topic that I want to cover with you quickly is, is uh, over the former president, Ben Ali. He's currently in Saudi Arabia and he's facing possible prosecution in Tunisia. Are you confident that the former president will be brought to justice in Tunisia, will be brought in front of a court in Tunisia? Well, we are doing our best. First of all, on the diplomatic level, we did everything, uh, first of all, to freeze all the assets of the former president, his family, and his in-laws. Then, on the legal, because, you know, today, we are not going to go back to the old habits of the old system. We would like everything to go legally and to be transparent, and we would like the uh, judicial system to be free of any interference, be it governmental or diplomatic. So, our judges are doing a great job but they would like to have uh, uh, every dossier, every file well done. So that when we, they present it, not mm -hmm. uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs or the Tunisian government, the judges, the Tunisian judges, they will be in touch with their counterparts on those countries where we have those people. And when they want uh, to have a very good file to be uh, flawless. All right. Uh, thanks very much indeed, uh, Foreign Minister Mouli Kefi, the Foreign Minister of Tunisia, for speaking to us today here at France 24. And with that, we're going to wrap up this program. Thanks for watching.